Hello my dear friends, hello book besties, welcome back to the channel, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be wrapping up my April reads. I actually did a poll on my little community tab. I asked you guys would you rather prefer, would you prefer separate videos like my monthly TBR and reading wrap up or would you like a video with those two together and recently I've been doing it with the two together but I thought to myself this month why not try and do something different but I did want to get your guys' feedback and it looks as though that you guys do prefer separate TBR and monthly wrap-up videos. So I read 11 books, almost 12 in the month of April, and I'm very excited to talk about all of them today with you guys. Oh, I actually have them right here. I forgot to put them right here. The majority of the books that I read this month I talked about in my April monthly reading vlog, and how are you guys liking the monthly reading vlogs? I have been having a fun but also challenging time with them each month. I talked about in April a lot the fact that I turned 25, so I did have a little bit of a reading slump. I still was able to complete 11 books, which I think is really good. And part of that is due to my 24 hour readathon vlog, which will be out very soon. Because I talked about a majority of these books in my monthly reading vlog, I'll just kind of do quick fire reviews on specific books and then I'll go more in depth in the books that I haven't really had a chance to share my opinions about. The first book I read this month was Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. This is a second chance romance type book. And it's almost like a marriage on the rocks type of thing. Josiah and Yasmin have split up. They have two kids. They are trying to navigate not only having two kids and an interconnected family, but also a business together. I think this book was really interesting because it dealt with a couple that has already been married and them sort of reminding themselves of how they feel about the other person. They start dating other people. They just kind of try to start moving on with their lives, but then they start realizing like, wait, do I want to move on from this person? I thought it was a very intriguing read. I rated it four out of five stars. At first I read it, I rated it five out of five stars because I was just so enthralled by the writing and by Kennedy Ryan's writing style. Upon reflection, decided to rate it a four out of five stars. And I think that's still a really good rating for me. And I really, again, like this book. I don't have the physical copy, but I read the, or actually listened to the audiobook for I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. That I rated a five out of five stars, a very enthralling read. Even more impactful because she narrates the book herself. It really opened my eyes and made me realize that things aren't as they seem. Like it may have looked back in the day that she was living this like lavish lifestyle, that she was this child actor. She had all these opportunities, but in reality, she was dealing with so much more than anybody could have ever fathomed. It was really impactful and profound to have listened to that audiobook. So five out of five stars for I'm Glad My Mom Died. I also, again, listened to another audiobook, like sort of tandem read it. I listened to the audiobook and then also picked up the physical copy here and there. But I listened to and read Book Lovers by Emily Henry. I talked about this in my April monthly reading vlog. I was a little bit disappointed by this. I don't know if Emily Henry is for me, but I'm gonna keep trying. I do have a ton of Emily Henry on my bookshelf and a couple Emily Henry that are sitting on my summer TBR. So I definitely am still gonna, you know, see if I can maybe find my particular fave of hers. I rated this again, three out of five stars. And there's that. <laughs> I then picked up Breathe. This is by Abby Glines. I'm trying to make it a point to read different books or different series from my childhood or like my youth. I either didn't finish as I was growing up or read whenever I was growing up and then, you know, kind of fell away from. A couple series have been hitting the same but this first book in the series did not really hit the same. A little bit insta-lovey, a little bit you know too fast-paced and not the best way but Abby Glines holds a big place in my heart and so I always am gonna have a level of respect for these books and it's sort of just fun to relive the moments that are happening in this book but I think that this book more so sets up the rest of the series and I remember that the rest of the series was a lot better so I'm very excited to get to the second book which is currently on my TBR right now. In my April monthly reading vlog, you guys see that your girl just needed a little refresh. I ended up cleaning my room a little bit, and during that, I read and listened to a majority of Daisy Jones and the Six audiobook. I really liked it. I DNF'd this back in the day, but I thought with the new Prime series coming out that I would give it another shot. I've been loving and getting a lot more comfortable with Libby, and so whenever my holds came in, I was like, okay. 
yeah, I'll definitely read that this month. And so I gave this a four and a half out of five stars. I was not ex expecting some of the things that happened in the book. And so that was like added to the shock value and definitely maybe bumped it up a half a star. Wasn't going to give it a five star because I DNF'd it back in the day, but I would absolutely recommend reading this book. I'm very surprised with where the book went. I am very excited to continue on in the Prime series. I need to start picking up a bit more of Taylor Jenkins Reads books because I have a bunch of them on my TBR or my physical TBR, but I just haven't been gravitating towards them. But every time I read them, they always surprise me in the best way possible. Then I did a video where I read like an Aries for a week. And this also happened to be the same week that I kind of got into a little mental funk. And so it took me a bit longer to do that video than I anticipated and initially planned. In that video, I read three books. I read Stop the Song of Achilles, A Man Called Ave, and Red Queen. All three of these were good books and they were books that I probably wouldn't pick up on my own. The Song of Achilles was, I think at first I wanted to rate it a five out of five stars, but I'm not 100% sure, maybe like four and a half. I just wanna be more picky with my five stars because it's like, if you're a five, if I'm giving you a five star, would I not be like thinking about those books all the time? Or I don't know, maybe I'm just putting too much thought into it. I really enjoyed this book. I love Greek mythology and I love like the aura of Greek mythology. And this book gives you everything that Greek mythology gives you. One of my favorite shows, they don't even like show it anymore. It's called Spartacus. Literally one of my favorite shows. Like it's, it's a little smutty, I'm not gonna lie, but like the actual storyline of the show is so beautiful. 300, the 300 Spartans. I love movies like that. It was cool to get that in book form and I thought it was very action-packed and I'm happy that I finally read it. It is kind of labeled as a sad book and so is A Man Called Ove. I did not, well I almost teared up at A Man Called Ove, but I did not shed any tears. I don't know if it's because I was listening to the audiobook during the sad part or what, but I was like, uh -huh. and that was it. But it was still a great book. I would recommend it. I could see this as a movie. They should totally make this into a movie. And then A Man Called Ove. I think I rated this four and a half stars. I really like this one as well. I know that Tom Hanks has a new movie release called A Man Called Otto, which is I think like an Americanized version of this because I realized that this is like a European aesthetic. I don't want to say aesthetic, but like the author is from like from Sweden. And so like that, that you get that aura, you get that vibe in here, right? This is about an older man who he unfortunately wants to unalive himself, as some people may say. Unfortunately, we go through a bunch of different scenes where like, okay, this is the moment, this is the time when he's gonna do it. And then something fortunately happens where he gets interrupted or his neighbor comes and needs his help. Something, something happens. But each time this happens in the story, Ove becomes a bit more caring about the different people that are interrupting him. There's a big sense of found family in this book, a huge sense of found family. It honestly does tug at the heartstrings. It's one of those books that like just makes you feel hope in humanity. I don't typically see a lot of books that have protagonists that are older interacting with other protagonists that are younger and so that might be a new trope that I try and look out for because I felt so inspired by this book I felt motivated to go help the elderly community I don't even know like the main thing in this book is that like his wife sort of kept him level-headed like sometimes he would get too mad or he would work too hard but his wife would always be the person that kind of grounded him and so he recently lost his wife he feels like there's no one to ground him anymore there's he feels like there's no purpose for him to be here you know that was his person and slowly but surely he realizes that he does have a lot of people but there's this cat they have like this non-verbal communication and it's just so cute it is so adorable so if you are looking just for like a heartfelt book, there's no romance, there's no this way, no that way, like found family trope, I would highly recommend this book. It's it's a really good read. And then lastly, Red Queen. It reminded me a lot of Akatar. Akatar mixed with like the Hunger Games type vibes. I liked it. It was kind of action packed, but I don't think I'm going to continue on in the series. Didn't really resonate that much with the main character. I thought she was kind of almost too stubborn, like stubborn to a fault. I liked all three of these books and I appreciated being able to be pushed out of my typical comfort zone whenever it comes to reads. And so I really enjoyed that video. Feel free to check out that video. But I, you know, kind of just wanted to get myself back into reading after that video. I felt super burnt out. I almost put myself into a reading slump for a second. I was supposed to read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder with a couple friends this month or last month. And so I was like a little bit behind on reading that. I decided to kind of kickstart everything to pick up Killjoy, which is the prequel to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. It is very short. It is not even this long. We had to include four chapters of like two different books to kind of like 
you know, give it some substance. It's barely over 100 pages, but I'm kind of thankful that I read this. I'm thankful that I kind of had that pretext going into A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which I did read. I did read A Good Girl's Guide to Murder this month. Killjoy got four stars. I really liked it. It was a little short, but I liked being able to get to know a bit about each of the characters and kind of like piece things together before I read the first book. And then A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, I want to give it five stars, but I think I'm going to get it like four and a half stars, four, four and a half stars. I really liked it, but I wasn't a huge fan of like the love interest. Like I feel like that was just like a conflict of interest in a way. So because of that little like un level of unsureness, I decided to rate it a four and a half stars, but I'm very excited to continue on in this series. And in my San Diego book crawl, I did pick up the second book in the series. So I definitely will be continuing on. And then lastly, honestly, this could potentially be my absolute favorite book of the month. Bear Wong's unsolicited advice for murderers literally blew my socks off in all the best possible ways. This book was a breath of fresh air. I'm just so surprised by it. The, the writing was refreshing. The characters were unique and complex. The storyline kept me guessing and I, you know, kept wondering who did it. Is she onto something? Are they onto anything? anything or they lying to each other like you never knew you never knew the entire time until things started to come together a bit and people started to be honest what i really liked about this book the roller coaster ride that we go on all along with vera wong vera wong is probably the most eclectic comforting yet hard loving character that i've ever encountered i mean she's an older woman she's an older chinese woman so she like she's very rooted in her ways but also in her tradition so like respecting your elders or waking up early there was just different things i really liked going along the journey that this book took me and I'm actually really interested to see what other books Jesse Q. Sutanto has because I realized she also wrote Dial A for Aunties and Two Aunties in a Wedding. Four Aunties in a Wedding. One of that book. I am very happy that this was the first book that I read by Jessie Q. Sutanto and I cannot wait to read more books by her because I love her voice. It is just so refreshing. I, I can't even describe it, but I feel like the best thing about this book is like it's a book for everyone. It's not too heavy one way. It's not too heavy another way. I mean, like it is a mystery book. It does have like an element of like, you know, who, who died and who killed them and all the type of stuff. But like it is such a good read and it kind of reminded me a little as well well of a man called Ove because of that like homey sort of found family vibe and then on top of that the murder mystery just like keeps you on your toes the whole time ah such a great book five out of five stars probably my favorite book of the entire month potentially favorite book of the entire year okay that's a big claim to make but definitely my favorite book of the entire month so here are the books that i read in the month of april i read 11 books i had an amazing reading month and i'm very excited to share with you guys my may tbr which will be coming out very very shortly i am telling myself right now i'm going to be reading absolute bangers nothing but bangers Say it one more time, bangers. I'm going to be realistic with myself this month on my TBR. Also make sure I stick to my TBR. Again, I'm very excited to do all of that and I will see you guys very soon in my next one. Thank you so much for watching. Oh,